What's going on, everybody? Hope you're all having a fantastic day today. Now, ladies and gentlemen, some news came out the other day that I think is extremely important for the future of Call of Duty. Of course, a lot of people saw this in a negative way, but personally, I see this in an extremely positive light. And of course, I'm going to go ahead and share it with you guys and see what you guys have to say down in the comment section. But of course, before we go ahead and dive deep, if you guys are interested in more content just like this, don't forget we do go ahead and post here daily at 8 in the morning Eastern time. Subscribe and hit that bell so you can stay notified on all this stuff, Call of Duty, X Defiant, you know, any other games that are possibly going to be dropping in the near future FPS related. And if you are interested in any of my live streams, I do that over on Kick pretty much daily as well. Usually that stream goes live around 1 to 2 p.m. Eastern time, and you can find a link to that channel down in the description of this video. Video. All right, so ladies and gentlemen, for those who don't know, just recently there has been a brand new drop for mobile devices called Call of Duty Warzone Mobile. Now, yes, there is another title called Call of Duty Mobile, which we all already know about, which dropped in 2019. But this brand new port, you know, is it's dropping, it's bringing back Verdansk. Well, it already brought back Verdansk because it's actually out now, and it has a whole different multiplayer experience tagged along with it. Personally, I didn't really talk about this because I just simply don't enjoy mobile games. You know, it just is what it is. I even dabbled in Call of Duty Mobile here and there a little while ago, but it's just not something that I can consistently play. When I want to play games, I usually hop on, you know, a PC or a console. And, you know, when I'm out, the last thing I'm really thinking about is plopping on my phone and playing a game. Unless, you know, I'm really bored, I'm in a waiting room or something of that sort, and then I want to go ahead and hop on a match. Maybe I'll give it a go. But other than that, you know, it's not really something of my interest. So I haven't made too much content about it. But again, with the news that I just recently saw about, you know, the numbers here, I think I had to go ahead and make a video today about this overall title here. But as you can see from Charlie Intel over on Twitter, Call of Duty Warzone Mobile has reportedly generated 1.6 million in revenue in its first five days after launch. US was the biggest market with 1.1 million. In comparison, Call of Duty Mobile generated 4.2 million in its first four days in 2019. Now, I know there's going to be a ton of people out there who will claim, you know, 1.6 million is an absolute ridiculous number. And I agree, you know, as us, I guess, common people, <laughs> yeah, we look at $1.6 million and we think that's absolutely absurd. But this is why I think it's a good thing, because Activision doesn't look at 1.6 million like that and say, oh, wow, that's fantastic, because of their previous numbers generated by Call of Duty Mobile, which was released in 2019, which got 4.2 million. Again, from our eyes, it still looks ridiculous, but in their eyes, that's 3 million off the table within the same time span. And this was a huge drop for them. The return of Verdansk, basically a new multiplayer experience for everybody to go ahead and partake in, and I'm assuming they were trying to go ahead and optimize it a bit better. I don't know. Again, I don't follow mobile games. You can correct me down in the comment section. But again, this is a massive L to them. You know, this is this is a huge loss. They lost 3 million compared to what they got with Call of Duty Mobile in 2019. And I know there's going to be some people out there that's going to say, you know, well, 2019 was around, you know, the pandemic. You know, Modern Warfare 2019, the original Warzone, Call of Duty Mobile, that was their hottest time. You know, so obviously they made absolute bank, which I do agree on. The pandemic was definitely a popular time for gaming. But just because the pandemic is gone and, you know, everybody's back to work and stuff doesn't mean gaming is irrelevant. People still game. You know, it's just in the pandemic, they had more time to go ahead and game. People are just simply not choosing Call of Duty anymore. You know, Call of Duty was a hot option, a hot pick to go ahead and hop into. Nowadays, it's just irrelevant, especially after they've been ramming their community with the same stuff time and time and time again. So with seeing these numbers here, I think this is fantastic. You know, a lot of people are going to say, well, this is the death of COD. You know, it's even worse for them. Call of Duty is going to go away. Well, in reality, for me personally... I think this is just going to help improve at some point in time, maybe not now, maybe not in the near future, but at some point in time, I'm hoping that this will take the priority off of mobile games and back into console and PC titles, you know, because right now, I'll be honest, I feel like mobile gets absolutely all the love, a lot of awesome updates, cool, you know, weapons, features, things that a lot of the hardcore fan base have been asking for, and of course, Sledgehammer did a pretty good job with, you know, presenting a decent layout with Modern Warfare 3 here. But still, all the years that we've been suffering, Call of Duty Mobile has not been suffering. They've been suffering with, you know, expensive microtransactions, I'll say that. But when it comes to gameplay, I feel like a lot of people kind of agree that <laughs> even for a mobile game, it probably has the most solid gameplay, you know, out of a lot of different titles, which is kind of depressing, right? You know, their main bread and butter should be PC and console. 
that's where it should be at, not in a mobile game. And I know a lot of people are going to argue this, and a lot of people are going to say, well, you know, uh, the numbers might be because the game is bad and poorly optimized, but I always, it's a mobile game. I don't know what people expect, man. You know, like I said, when I hop on a mobile game, I play it for like a match or two. It's something that I'll do if I'm extremely bored, I'm in a waiting room, and I just need to pass, you know, 10, 20 minutes. Maybe I'll hop on a mobile game. You know, I don't legitimately think I'm going to be playing that thing for hours, and people are shocked about their phones exploding and batteries overheating, and I'm thinking to myself, these people are probably playing Call of Duty Mobile on their mobile device, you know, for like five, six, seven hours straight, expecting their phone to be able to comprehend this. And yeah, I get it. Technology's improving, but it's still a phone at the end of the day. You know, if your PlayStation is starting to sound like a jet engine from the amount of time you put into that thing, what makes you think your phone is going to be any better? You know, something that's not even made specifically or gaming. And I do want to point out that I do understand certain circumstances where people don't have consoles and they have to rely on, you know, a mobile device. Uh, honestly, I'll just say go with a pad. If you have a pad, that's way better than using your phone. But I get why people play this and I get why they would want support. But again, their bread and butter is literally console and PC. That is where absolutely all of their focus should be, no matter what, you know. And it's going to hurt some people because I know it's a lot of people who, you know, specifically play mobile especially who might watch me as well you know people who only play mobile and i don't want to come off as rude or you know ignorant saying that you guys don't deserve any support because you guys do but again call of duty before call of duty mobile is even a thing what made call of duty call of duty you know the console and pc versions of the game that's how it even got its name in the first place and those are lacking now that is where the priority should be and then mobile should come along and that's what i'm hoping these numbers will do here i hope activision not just activision forget about that i hope microsoft because they are now the owners of this when they see these numbers i mean that that's a big deal to them they just coughed up how much money to purchase all of activision right they need to generate income you know, Bobby Kotick is probably sitting back laughing because he already made his bank. You know, he, he literally lived through the pandemic with Activision and all this crap where they made all that fortune off of Call of Duty. And now he sold it off. And now Call of Duty's making less and less and less money. <laughs> He's probably laughing to the bank while Microsoft is going to have to try to fix this. But this is good. Let Microsoft see these numbers. Let them see the results and let them stress about it. It's not our problem. It's their problem. And they need to go ahead and resolve this. And I hope that they see it. And it well, I should say this too. I hope it's not going to be the opposite way where they see this and they think they have to do even more to mobile to generate more income, you know? that That's the problem here. They could see this in the light where this will be, you know, a red flag and they need to drop mobile a little bit and focus on console to make sure that is getting a lot of profit and then go back to mobile. But in reality, they'll probably just say, yep, we need to do way more work on mobile, which will then reduce more time on the console and PC ports. And, you know, it's, it's just going to be that gap in, uh, I guess, feedback and just community, the, the feel of community. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, every time someone hops on Call of Duty Mobile, I feel like their experience is great because they feel like, you know, a lot of the problems they had in the community were resolved. Whereas on console and PC, they just keep pushing out these titles where Model for 3 is an exception. But all the other titles were just absolutely forced out and barely any feedback was taken. You know, and it, it just sucks. And I just feel like more people would want to come back to Call of Duty if we could get this experience right here more consistently. You know, once every so often having, you know, a team communicate with you like how Sledgehammer's doing it isn't enough to make anybody consistently come back. And then on top of, you know, them hyper-focusing on mobile to try to bring that back up into, you know, popularity might pull developers even further away from their communities when it comes to console and PC games, which would be worse for everyone. I just hope that's not the path they take. I hope that they see this as... Uh, a sign to be, you know back down from mobile a little bit you have to understand mobile is extremely popular but i feel like the way to really get a lot of revenue which is what they're trying to do here right they see that mobile you know generates some of the most revenue you could possibly think of but realistically you know i feel like the more casual games on mobile are what generate revenue and you know casually scheming people out of their pockets you know it, it sucks but the, it just is what it is and, you know like monopoly go for example that game got what like two billion dollars within less than a year like you know that's what they're aiming for but call of duty as an idea a concept is just too complex for a mobile game and even though it's fun to hop on every so often i don't think the majority of their priority should be there they should be hyper focusing 
console and PC games, making sure developers are getting into that mindset to be with their communities and make sure that builds up instead of focusing on the mobile experience. But of course, ladies and gentlemen, go down in the comment section, leave your opinions, let me know what you guys think. As always, if you enjoyed today's video, leave a like. If you hate it, leave a dislike. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell. I post daily here at 8 in the morning Eastern time. And of course, if you're interested in any of my live streams, I do that pretty much daily as well over on Kick. You can find a link to that channel down in the description of this video. And that usually goes live around 1 to 2 p.m. Eastern time. But as always, thank you guys for tuning in. I'll see you all in the next one. Peace out.